fifth day one. Day one. Yeah. Was it? Good day. Yeah. Great day. Yeah. What did you like? I love the tempo. Um, guys flew around, practiced really well. Um, a lot of the young guys really studied hard. They, uh, we were able to incorporate them on day one, which is great. So uh, I was really happy with the tempo. Was there a little bit of a trash talking that you had to quell uh, between Bryce and uh, and Demarie after that uh, little knock around there? No, there was no trash talking. No, oh, okay. Not at all. <clears throat> Not at all. No, it was it was nothing. You know, you get when guys driving for the ball, nobody meant to do anything. It was all fine. It was nothing. So. Are, are you always hopeful that your freshmen come in sort of knowing what's going on with the playbook and knowing what to expect and you never? Yes, for, for sure. Um, but it's evident that as the freshmen have been here through summer bridge and they've been coming out here in the evenings, uh, you got to give our guys credit, our players credit, uh, because they've done a good job of mentoring these guys. You know, they put Keenan in charge of mentoring the young guys and getting them going and things like that. So, um, you know, it's uh, it was... No, it's just scratching the surface. It's a couple formations, and that was it, you know. But still, the temp—I was—I was pleased for the most part with, with, uh, you know, everybody's work. It's obvious over the summer that they worked well um, because practice went really smooth today for the first one. Yeah. What did you think of Bryce specifically? He had a few big plays. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> nothing earth-shattering. You know, we caught a couple balls, and you know, there's. We're in helmets, and so there's a lot of football left to go, you know. But I thought a lot of the young guys did a real nice job, actually. You know, Bryce did what you expect him to do, you know. So your punter he dropped the ball to too, though. So <laughs> you know, I mean, you that. take the good with the bad. But your punter seems to be able to kick the ball a little bit, huh? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, I was. <laughs> that was the thing I was looking for when I first stepped on the field today. Was to walk right over to him and see what that looked like, and the sigh of relief. Ball kind of disappeared up in the clouds there, he huh? Did, he did. You know, through the summer, I've asked the snappers, I said, hey, how's the punter doing? Oh, coach, he hit some like you haven't really seen him up too I haven't seen him. That's the first kick I saw him kick today. Yeah. So. <laughs> was that Cole or Stephen? Cole. Yeah. Cole. Yeah. Who, uh, who was primarily responsible for recruiting him? Jenek. <clears throat> Looks like it could be a keeper. Oh, there's based, no doubt. <laughs> based on day now, one, huh? Day one, you know. <laughs> No rush, no out. nothing, you know, not 70,000 fans screaming at him, and, you know, the clock running down and all the stuff that goes with it. But he's a pretty cool customer. You know, I, I really, uh, I've really been pleased through the recruiting process of knowing what type of kid he is and how he handles himself and things like that. So, um, but uh, I, I was pleased to see that he really has a belief. Does Fort show up tomorrow? Is he here tomorrow for practice or? Yeah, he he will be. He'll, I think he gets in late tonight. And he'll be practicing tomorrow. Well, we got to go through all the clearance and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we got to go through all the compliance papers and things like that, <coughs> physical and all that type of thing. Okay, yeah. So we would hope to get that done during the day, and then he should be on the field tomorrow afternoon. What do you like about him? I know you recruited him originally out of high school. What did you see then, and, and what have you seen since then that convinced you you wanted him still? Well, he's he's a he's an excellent linebacker. He has very good size. You know, right now he's you know, 6'3", 240. You know, he's a great looking player. Uh, he was a really good player in high school, but then you watch the tape of him at Penn State and really doing a lot of nice things. He's physical. He can really run, and uh, you know so. Uh, really excited to have him here. When you guys talked to him in this last week or two, was the bigger issue for him whether he was even going to leave Penn State or, or as much as where to go? Uh, I think that's that's all it was, is am I or am I not? Right. Uh, I think, you know, he had a lot of offers, but I think, I think, I think he really wanted to come here out of high school, but he was 17 years old. That was a long way to go from home and all that type of thing. So there is some background there. There's some familiarity and so on and so forth. So I think it was just, you know, it was an opportunity for him to be able to come to a place that I think he wanted to come in the first place. Is he available for us to talk with tomorrow? Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it goes, but I would imagine so. Okay. Once it became apparent that Penn State players were going to be available, did you guys reach out to him or did he kind of reach out to you? No, um, they kind of reach out to us, you know, and uh, 
so then from there we had to get clearance to we had to call Penn State and ask to talk and from there we then we called him. He's a veteran guy. I would expect you envision him in the mix to play a lot, possibly start. We'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see how it goes. You know, there's a you still got to learn the defense and right. you know I think the speed of the game and all that kind of thing we don't really worry about because he's right. played in some big time games already. Um, you know, so you, you don't worry about the big eyes at all. It's just a matter of, of understanding what we're trying to get. Uh, I was going to ask about uh, Gibson at right guard. Is he, uh, he's there for now, or do you like him at that spot? He played there all spring. Yeah. 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 And how, how's he done at, in that, at that spot? Uh, he's done okay. You know, I thought he started off in spring really well. I thought he didn't. Uh, I, w I wasn't pleased with how he ended spring, and so, you know, there's a big goal for him to to pick it up in the fall here and uh, in camp. But he has a lot of experience there. He played there all spring. The offensive line, I take it, will be a work in progress for a while. You a lot of moving parts there. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's going to be key that we find the eight or nine guys, you know, that can uh, move to different positions and interchange and things like that. And with Dom being out now, uh, you know, it, it gives some of, some of the other guys are going to have to step up. And uh, you know, so it's the offensive line will definitely be a focal point. Right. You know, fall camp. For those you know of us who have not talked to you about white side since you reinstated him, talk about the process of doing that and why you decided it was okay to let him back on the team. I just felt like, you know, you, if someone makes a mistake and, you know, they, you always want to give young people a chance to, to, you know, turn over a new leaf and, and uh, understand and, and have gratitude for where they are and what they have. And, um, you know, I believe that he really um, wants to be here and wants to do things the way we want them done. And so that's why we brought him back. Back in May, did you sort of leave it as an open thing with him? Did, mm -hmm. did you know you'd revisit it with him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all, so all along it was a matter. There was a constant communication back and exactly. forth. Okay. Exactly. He's on the field. Yeah. Yeah. You feel he's he is uh, appreciative of what he has now oh, that yeah. he's been given this uh, second sure. chance. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Looked like uh, C.J. Anderson took a few teams or uh, first team snaps. Is he someone that could work his way into the starting lineup? Uh, yeah, I think we're in a very good position there with. Uh, EC and CJ, I think CJ really proved toward the latter part of the year last year that he's a very good football player. He's had a great summer from everything I've heard. Uh, I really think he's even assumed some leadership role, and um, you know he's he's worked really hard. And so um, you know it's it's nice to have the one-two punch like we've had, and so I think he can kind of take a little pressure off EC there. And uh, those two guys are still, you know, those two guys are the top two guys right now. But then I still, I feel very, we feel very fortunate to have uh, some other backs too. We have we're pretty deep in the backfield when you look at Lasco and Bigelow and Irvin and those guys all back there. It's, uh, it's, we have a pretty good stable of backs there. <clears throat> With CJ and EC, could it almost be they're sharing the position at some point? More sharing the position, be on the field at the same time. Right. You know, all that. A lot of options. Yeah. Same sort of deal with the tight ends, where there's there's a one slash one a and a two two a. That really hasn't hasn't been determined at all. You know, we, again, that's another position I feel really good about with the versatility of the tight ends with Hagen and Rogers, uh, Work. You know, those those three guys would be the top three right now, and um, you know, and then develop another one along the line here. But um, all three of those guys are going to play a lot. What kind of report have you got um, about Eric Stevens coming back? You know, uh, that he's ready to go. Uh, you know, I, we practiced today, caught a ball in the flat, and turned up the sideline. Uh, looked a little bit tentative, which is understandable, uh, you know, because anybody who has that type of thing is going to be a little bit tentative. So I, I look for him to work his way back full speed uh, throughout mm -hmm. the remainder yeah. of camp. Can you talk about what you learned at uh, New England and your, your trip back there as far as tight end use and well, anything else? Well, learn a lot of things, really. I mean, you, you go there and you, you kind of have big eyes and keep a broad vision of everything that goes on, how they practice, organization, tempo, you know, all that type of thing. Um, but 
you know, they have two really good ones, Gorkowski and Hernandez, and the way they utilize them and put them in different positions and things like that. You know, their offense pretty much runs through their tight ends. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's something that we want to have the ability to do. You know, we want to bring the, the young receivers along. We want to take some of the pressure off Keenan. And you can do that through the young receivers, the tight end play, some of the versatile play that our running backs have to be able to catch the ball, things like that. So um, to be able to be in different personnel groups, especially with tight ends on the field, and still have the ability to run your whole <coughs> offense and run a spread game and, and be able to anchor the edges down and still be able to run the ball that way too, uh, you know, really that's that's what you're looking for. When, when were you there and how long? I don't remember when I was there. They were in OTAs, and uh, I was there for three days. Back in the spring. In the summer. Okay. In June, I believe so. it was in the summer. Yeah. Whenever they're in OTAs, probably in June. Yeah. Like that. Time well, time well spent, though? Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. Big time. Had some great conversations with Belichick, and was able to watch a lot of tape, was able to sit down on some meetings, and so it will have some good conversations with Coach Belichick and so it was it was very worthwhile. So your tight ends now will be as good as Gronkowski. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not sure about that. That guy is a beast. He wasn't practicing when we were there actually. He was he was kind of rehabbing, but uh, he looked great. He's he's a good looking guy. Rogers is kind of a beast too. He's well, you have a 270 pound tight end and Richard <laughs> Rogers who can run and, and he has skills like receivers. So uh, I think he has very similar characteristics of, of those guys. Hernandez is a little smaller, but uh, very elusive. And, uh, you know, they put him in the backfield and hand him the ball and do all kinds of things with Hernandez. But Gronkowski, they really do a nice job of spreading him around. Is Aspedia kind of more in that mold, or he's a little smaller? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maximo would be that same type of guy as Hernandez, an H-back guy, um, H-back, fullback. You know, and then we have to broaden the package. You know, it's it's a lot. It's still a lot to learn. You know, because if you're going to put guys in multiple positions, there's a lot of learning involved in it. So we're going to have to be, we're going to have to bring him along a little bit slower. You know, because there's so much. You know, receivers are receivers, and they learn that position. But when you're a tight end, fullback, flanked out, there's a lot to learn there. Pass protections, route running, run blocking. There's a lot of stuff there for for that position. Guys, good. All right. All righty. Okay. Good to see you guys.